How's it going ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to another video. My name is Kaz and today we are going to do something pretty cool. Today we are going to code a CSGO external trigger bot together. Now if you don't know what a trigger bot is, essentially when you put your crosshair over an enemy it's going to automatically shoot for you. As you can imagine that's very useful when holding angles and things like that. Now before we get into it uh, I'd like to say that I have a discord server so if you want to ask any questions or come hang out I suggest you join that and um, I'd really appreciate it if you dropped a like on the video and subscribe. But with that out the way, let's get right into it. I'm going to start off by opening a brand new Visual Studio project. We're going to open an empty project and I'm going to save that to my desktop. I'm going to call it Pro Trigger and Create. Okay, now that Visual Studio has opened, um, immediately we want to come up to the top here and we want to change from debug to release and we want to change from x64 to x86. Now we're going to need to change some solution properties before we do anything. So come over here to your solution, right click and go to properties. Make sure you have application application.exe selected. Make sure your Windows SDK version is the latest installed version. And most importantly, come over here to C++ language standard and change that to C++ 20. Go ahead and apply. Now in advance, we're going to change our character set to the multi-byte character set. And last but not least, go to linker system and make sure subsystem is set to console. Okay, with that out the way, we can start making our project. In source files, we're going to add a single file and that's going to be our main.cpp. This is where our cheat's going to run. And and in header files, we're going to add a file and that's going to be memory.h. This is going to hold our memory class. Now, if you've watched my other tutorials, you should know which memory class we're going to be using. Um, but if you haven't, I'll show you how to get it. I'll have a link in the description below, but you're going to come over to this repository. It's called ProBHop. You're going to go to cheat and you're going to go to memory.h. It's really, really difficult. You're going to copy this and you're going to jump into memory.h click control A and paste and we should be good to go. Anyway, moving on to main.cpp, we can go ahead and include this and we can create our entry point. Now, as per usual with CSGO cheats, we're going to need some offsets. So I'm going to go ahead and create a namespace and I'm going to call that offset. This, of course, is going to hold our offsets. Now, how do you get offsets, you might be asking? Well, I will have a link to this in the description too. Haze dump is brilliant. It does all the work for you. All you need to do is copy paste what you need. So we're going to click Control F and we're going to grab the offsets that you need. You're going to need local player. Let's go ahead and copy that and paste that right in. Next, you're going to need uh, the entity list offset. Also, going to need the force attack offset. You're going to need the health offset. We're going to need team num, of course. And last but not least, the offset that makes Triggerbot possible is going to be the crosshair ID offset. This one right here. Go ahead and grab that. So now that we have our offsets and we have our main function, we can go ahead and start coding. First things first, we're going to create our hack loop and we can do that by making an infinite while loop like so. Now this loop is going to run like a billion times a second. That's obviously not good. So we're going to come up here and we're going to include thread just like that. And now we can sleep this loop like so. I know this line's pretty crap, but we're going to uh, we're going to sleep this loop for one millisecond every time it runs. Now, before we actually get into coding the cheat part, we're going to need a couple things. First of all, we're going to need to instantiate our memory class, and we can do that like so. As per usual, the constructor of this memory class takes the name of the process that you want to access the memory of. If all goes well, this class is going to open up a handle and allow you to read and write process memory. Once we've done that, we are going to need to get the client.dll base module address, and we can do that like so. We get client by calling memory.getModule address. Now I want to print this to console, so I'm going to come up here and I'm going to include IO stream, and we're going to go ahead and print the value of client.dll just like that. All right, now we are all ready to start coding our hack. First things first, we're going to bind our trigger bot to a key. Now, how we do that is we're going to use the get async key state function, but that function takes a key code. In this video, I'm going to use the shift button just because it's simple, but let's say you want to use a mouse button, then you're going to come over here, you're going to search for whichever button you want, and you're going to use the key code. What we're going to do is we're going to say, if you don't have the trigger bot key pushed down, then don't run any code. So let's do that quickly. So if get async key state VK shift is not pushed down, we are going to contact Continue. That means that our trigger bot's only going to run when you push down VK shift. Of course, change this to whichever button you desire. What we're going to do next is we're going to get our local player and we're going to get our local player's health. So let's go ahead and do that. You can get your local player like so. We're going to read a UN pointer off of client and our local player offset. 
and we can get our local player's health by reading an in32 off of our local player plus the m health offset. Now, obviously we don't want to be doing any trigger bots when our local player is dead, so we're gonna add a quick check for that. So if local health is zero, we're gonna go ahead and skip. That means that our local player is dead. Okay, now we're gonna get the value of our local player's crosshair ID, and we can do that like so. Now, as I mentioned earlier, this offset is the bread and butter of Triggerbot. The value of this offset is going to be the index of whatever your crosshair is over. Now, that might be a little bit confusing, but if you have your crosshair over an enemy player, then this value is actually going to be the index of the enemy player. That means that we can check whether or not you are looking at a player, and we can get the entity, and then we can check if they're an enemy, and if they are an enemy, we are going to shoot at them. It's pretty cool. Now, once we have cross ID, we're going to need to do a couple checks. The first check is to see if it is equal to zero, and we can do that like so. If exclamation cross ID. The reason we're doing this is because if cross ID is, is set to zero, that means that we are looking at the world. And obviously, we don't want to shoot if we're looking at the world. The other check that we're going to do on cross ID is we're going to see if it's bigger than 64. We can do that like so. The reason we're checking if cross ID is bigger than 64 and then skipping is because players reserve index 1 to 64. And that means that if cross ID is greater than 64, you are not looking at a player. And if cross ID is zero, you are also not looking at a player. Therefore, what we're doing is we're filtering out every other entity in the CSGO game just so that we can check if we are looking at a player or not. Anyway, with that out the way, we are now going to get the entity of the player that we are looking at. And we can do that like so. We're going to get the player by reading a UN pointer off of client plus entity list. Now remember, entity list is basically just a list of entity objects and the interval between each entity is 0x10. Now over here, what we are doing is we're subtracting one from cross ID. And this is because cross ID actually gives you the object ID. It doesn't give you the index in the array. And therefore we need to subtract one to get the actual index of the player. Don't worry if that's confusing, just stick with me for now. Now we need to check if the player that we're looking at is alive. And we can do that like so. We're gonna check if exclamation mark memory dot read player plus health. That means that the player's health is gonna be equal to zero. And if that is the case, then we obviously don't want to run any trigger bot code. The next check we're gonna do is we're gonna check if the player's on our team. And if they are, we are going to skip them. We can do that like so. So if player plus offset team number is equal to local player plus offset team number, that means that we are gonna be on the same team. And obviously we don't want to shoot at the players on our team. So we're gonna go ahead and skip them if they are that. Now, if our program gets to this point, it means that we are looking at a player, the player is alive, and the player is an enemy. And all that's left to do now to make our trigger bot is to actually shoot. And we can do that using the force attack offset. So we're gonna call memory.write, we're gonna write a UN pointer to client plus DW force attack, and we're gonna write six to it. That's going to make us primary fire. Now, this is very important because we're going to sleep this thread for 20 milliseconds, and then we're going to set it back to four. If you don't set it back to four, you're not going to be able to shoot after the cheat has shot for you. But with all of that out the way, um, that should be our trigger bot completed. So let's go ahead and see if it works. I'm gonna build this and my build succeeded. That's always good news. I'm gonna hop in game and I'll catch you guys there. All right, CSGO has launched and I'm gonna go ahead and run pro trigger. As we can see, uh, we successfully got our client.dll. So let me get into a game. All right, now remember my trigger key was shift. So let's go ahead and test if this works. I'm holding down shift, which is also my crouch key. And uh, let's see. And there we go. As you can see, it automatically shoots for me when I'm crouching. And there we go. That is how you make external trigger bot for CSGO in C++. So once again, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below or join my Discord. Once again, I'd really appreciate it if you subscribed and liked the video. And until next time, cheers guys.